everybody. Welcome back to Better Together. Elvira and I are here again. I'm Melissa Hunter and this is Elvira Taylor. <laughs> You're like, wait, what's my name? I didn't know you were going to do that. I have to say and, my uh, name is Elvira Taylor. No, <laughs> Elvira Taylor. Yes. So we are very excited about, you know, this new way that we're doing things and about getting better together um, and, and really making this more of a collaborative effort. And when we were watching Brene Brown's Atlas of the Heart um, and then going over the book, but she did mention where she is at on the Enneagram. And that got me thinking that would be kind of a fun thing for Elvira and I to do together. It's also an interesting thing for you to do. I will link you to some free Enneagram tests. The, the one that Elvira and I took is like really comprehensive and it's like $60. So you don't have to do that. We just wanted to really dive in and get as much as we could, so we could make a really good video and podcast trying to be hashtag actual profesh. What did you think of the overall process before we give everybody sort of a background on what this is? Taking the test, like I've taken other personality tests before in the past. I'm not familiar with a lot of the other names. It's been so long since I've taken them, uh, whether it's like, are you a narcissist? What kind of business Mm -hmm. person are you? And things of that nature. So I was kind of prepared. I was like, okay, it's going to be something on that level where it's going to ask me a lot of questions, where it's going to do a little bit of comparison. It is very in-depth. I was surprised with how many questions I think it was about either, was it 170 or 177? I don't know why there's a lot bringing out to me. Um, So it is, it does take a little bit of time. It took me about 30 to 40 minutes. I mean, it depends how Mm -hmm. like hard you want to concentrate on each question. I feel like it did cover a lot of different personality traits though, going through each question. I feel like it also did repeat a little bit, but I love when they do that because it's like, oh wait, am I going to answer it the same? (laughs) I know. Cause that's what they're trying to do. If you're like, yeah. wait, is that really me? Am I not really that person? Uh, so yeah. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good overall experience and I sat there in the middle of the night taking it. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's always, it's always fun. So the Enneagram, 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 I'm never really Graham, entirely I think, sure. Well, I don't know. That's what I was calling. It was Enneagram. Enneagram. Cause I hear people say it like two different ways. So this actually comes to us all the way from 1915 believe it or not, a philosopher named George, I am going to mangle his last name, Gurdjieff. It's G-U-R-D-J-I-E-F-F. But he was the one who first came up with this concept of these nine personality types. But then in the 1960s, somebody, and, and it doesn't really give credit to who did this, took the nine personality types. So yeah, so they've put it into this circular format with these like arrows pointing to different ways because the idea is that you know we're not just one type we are kind of a blend of different types we do have a primary type so what are the nine types so these are these are the names that they were given you know way back when when uh i guess in 1915 so some of them might sound a little strange but so number one is the reformer Number two is the helper. Number three is the achiever. Number four is the individualist. Five, the investigator. Six, the loyalist. Seven, the enthusiast. Eight, the challenger. And nine, the peacemaker. And the concept is we're born with these personality traits already formed in us. What do you think about that, Elvira? I, I do agree with that. I feel like there is a little bit of that whole like nature versus nurture. And, you know, if someone has extremely, let's say helper parents, like number twos, would they then grow up to be someone who is then automatically a helper? Not necessarily. I feel like they will take a lot of those traits into their own personality. Um, but I do believe I'm a strong believer that if someone's kind of have something already hard, like hardwired into their brain, yeah. it's kind of hard to just go, okay, wipe that off and then start with something fresh. Will it influence them hopefully to maybe have a little bit balanced characteristics? I think it might, but I do feel like a lot of things are hardwired into us. Yeah, I agree. I definitely think, um, especially I only have one child, but I know for family members who have multiple children, you know, every child's being raised sort of in the same house and other than their birth order and some few little differences, you know, you've got the same genetic material and you're being raised in the same house. But each child from the moment they're born definitely has a different personality. And yeah, I think that's just part of 
however we're made, whether you believe that's, you know, coming from God or the universe, and this is the soul that's inhabiting your body, and this is the way they are, or if you're just pure science, and you're like, these are just the way the neurons all came together in your brain from your DNA. Either way, I do think that we start out with, with a certain kind of personality. And then from there, we, we grow and we learn and we change and we try to work on these things. I think what's really important about finding out, like, it's fun. First of all, it's fun. I mean, I love taking personality tests, you know, which Disney princess are you? I mean, <laughs> I do all the Buzzfeed all the tests. Magazines when you're in the doctor's office type of yes. personality <laughs> tests. I think everyone <laughs> on those, like I love doing those. So yeah. I just, I, I think they're, I think they're fun. I think it's interesting. And, um, and so, you know, you've got these nine different personality types, which is more than a lot of other tests. Like, you know, the disc profile is basically D I S C we've got four, and then you've got blends of the four and then Myers Briggs. I don't remember how many there are, but there are not nine. What's really interesting about the Enneagram is you've got these nine which is a lot. And then it goes into the sort of add on, which we'll get to when we get to the end, um, which I'm trying to remember the, what they call those like secondary or it's kind of like um, how it manifests. Wait, I'm, gonna the, get to it. Give me. I'm looking at the email that they sent me with all the yeah. like, this is what you are. And like the little yeah. like, star and everything. And I feel like it's over a subtype. That's what it is. Yeah, they yeah. just call it a subtype one. And yeah. they use actually different names that, so I was looking online versus the email that they sent us. And they, yeah. I think over the years, they have slightly changed each of the nine yes. names. So like number one, they have it as a strict perfectionist. Mm -hmm. So maybe back in 1915, they didn't have the word or term perfectionist widely yeah. used. So over the years, they have slightly altered the names for the nine different um, styles. It really is. Yeah. So do you want to go over the names the way they are on the test that we took? Yes. So number one is going to be strict perfectionist. Two is um, helper. They had the same thing as considerate helper, mm -hmm. uh, which I think that you said the same thing on, on yours as well. Uh, number I three is so. um, competitive achiever. Four is intense creative. Five is quiet specialist. Six is loyal skeptic. Uh, seven is enthusiastic visionary, eight is active controller, and nine is adaptive peacemaker. So similar, but yet slightly different. So I think they've just evolved into more of like, yeah. I would say these sound more modernized than yeah, the yeah. original names. And a little more fleshed out, um, I think, in terms of, well, what does that mean? You know, the reformer versus strict perfectionist is the, that's a strict perfectionist really, really says what it is, doesn't it? <laughs> really just gets right to it. Um, so yeah, and I, I think, you know, this, so depending on the test that you take, you might get like a really long, like how many pages is this thing that they sent us? It's like 25 pages or something. In -depth. Um, <laughs> it's very in-depth. It's so in-depth. Uh, and it, it explains to you that you have like your core type, then there's 27 subtypes, types, then there's centers of expression, wing influence, which is like, you know, you got a little bit of this thrown in, um, your, your self-awareness and the way that you integrate, as we were saying, you know, nature versus nurture at some point, nurture and, and your experiences and your environment definitely come in. And so they do, uh, they do bring that in on this report strain level. Um, I think this is interesting because it, it lets you, it's sort of like, well, what happens when this personality type is under strain, under a lot of stress? How do they behave? Uh, which is very interesting. Lines of tension and release, the lines connected to your main Enneagram style, open pathways for working with the strain you may be experiencing and support you in your developmental journey. So they are, you know, with this report, they are trying to help you kind of walk through some of those uh, challenges of the, the, um, the different, you know, problems or, or pitfalls that might be present in your particular type. I like it just because I feel like if let's say you and your child or you and your partner both take it and you have similar numbers or different numbers going over this, you can kind of help you understand where this other person's coming from. Like you said, for yeah. this brain profile, you know, you can figure out like, Oh, they're going through a moment right now. And I remember yeah. reading this off of the test that we took and how would they understand it? And so mm -hmm. it is going back to what we're talking about, like Alice of the Heart, where it's 
you know, which what it inspired us to take this test. It's like, hey, we, you know, question ourselves. We question others. Let's, how do we get better by taking these little tests? Sometimes maybe as silly as that sounds like, oh, let's take this personality test. Hey, at the end of the day, if it can help you a little bit understand whether it's someone around you, yourself, it works mm -hmm. out. Yeah, I think so. I think so. And I think that's a key thing. You know, there's understanding yourself, but I also think it's really cool and important to, I mean, I don't know that you're going to like memorize all nine personality types, but just to have a kind of idea of these different sort of types of people so that, and understand the motivations and you know, especially if people are willing to share with you wh where they are on a personality test, like I know where my husband is. Um, it, it helps you when you, sometimes you're like, why are they doing this? You know, it just reminds you like, oh, because where this is at. the way that that they, you know, they deal with it. And I think also in a, in a work environment, and I think this is why a lot of management, uh, you know, offsites that I've had in my life have been around us doing some sort of personality profile test and then, you know, dissecting it and then talking about it in terms of, well, so what is my leadership style? How do I adapt? Okay. So let's say I'm, I'm, you know, uh, you know, this type of person and I've got this other type of person. Cause sometimes there's opposing types, you know, and that's what that graph kind of shows you when you look at the Enneagram, it's like, well, who's opposite me. And so, you know, how do you function and work with and lead or manage somebody who is so completely opposite from you? Because there, there is no bad type to be. There's no bad types. There's no wrong types. There's no right or wrong way to, you know, to have your brain organized. We just need to, in order to work together and to get better together, we need to try to understand each other better. And so I think that's kind of where we were coming at from this, but we also want to have a little fun with it. So we want to have it a little bit of a surprise. So we haven't sent each other emails or we have no idea what we got as each other's score. So we wanted to yeah. guess first what scores that we got. Um, it's a little hard for, for me to guess you just because I know you personally and from work. So I was kind of like, okay, she definitely likes helping. And then, you know, that I know you from like, obviously editing all of your videos now. And it's so seeing you in different lights. So it's kind of hard to put you in just one category. I went with number two because I really feel that you are a helper. And just to go over what number two is here, it says that I'll just highlight a few things where it says mm -hmm. like you um, want to help others, which obviously you do. You're warm and giving. As a friend, I really feel like you are just warm, caring, giving. There is one part where it was that that it says here they may over involve themselves in other lives and risk being manipulated. And the only reason why I agree with that is that you don't set up boundaries sometimes with people that you work with and they, and it's not in a bad way. You know I mean? Like you're just a helpful person. So then they tend to go, Oh, help me with this. Help me with that. And then you kind of lose yourself a little bit because you haven't set up that boundary to do that. So that's why I chose number two for those reasons. Um, I do feel like there's other characteristics from other points as well. Like, obviously I do think you a little bit of a perfectionist because I feel like I am as well. I think you're also like a visionary and you're creative. So it was kind of hard to put you in one, but I chose number two just as an overgeneralization. Yeah, I think, yeah, that it's really hard to kind of try to pick out somebody else's like, well, what do you think they are? And I think I ran into the same um, conundrum when I was trying to figure out what you, you are because you, you know, two is you, you're definitely are helpful and warm and giving. Um, but you're also very achievement oriented. You're, you're super creative. Um, I wouldn't, I didn't consider you for quiet specialist at all. No. Um, <laughs> I, I figured you weren't that either. Yeah. I, I also loyal skeptic. I was like, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I guess I'm going to find out. Um, and then, you know, where I ended up, uh, it was, it was between enthusiastic visionary and active controller. So let me just tell you what the two of those are. So enthusiastic visionary, which is number seven, they seek variety, stimulation, and fun, tackling channels with optimism and engaging with life in a future oriented way. They may seem distracted, hedonistic, insensitive, or irresponsible to others. I, I don't see that in you. Um, sevens are often unhappy, but deny this. I don't know about that. And then active controller, eight, 
Eights are a force of nature with a strong presence and personality that values being in control. They are guarded, but caring and protective of those around them as they mask any vulnerability with a tough, no nonsense exterior. They may seem intimidating and confrontational. At a higher integration, they combine their directness with compassion, collaborating with others while serving the greater good. So I kept going back and forth between seven and eight because you are super created. I think you are very um, visionary. Um, you just have so much energy and optimism. But the downsides of the seven, like I don't see you as distracted, hedonistic, irresponsible. I don't think you're hyperactive. So I went with eight, an active controller. You are a force of nature. Uh, with a strong presence. And I, I think that from what I know of you, you do, um, you do really like to be in control of your life as much as possible. And uh, so I see that in you. Um, you're very protective about the people around you. And that's true. What people might like be looking at and wondering, how could you say that about Elvira? It's that about where it says that they are guarded. And, you know, people, I think this is one of those things where it's like when you know someone a little bit better, better. Yeah. Yeah. So you look like you're putting it all out there on social media, but I know that there is a very deep well of a person in Elvira <laughs> and you guard that you don't show all your cards. You know, I'm over here, like throwing my cards up in the air, like everybody has cards and you know, you, you kind of keep yours close to the vest. So that that's where I, I ended on, on eight. And I, you know what it is, the term active controller just sounds so negative to me. Whereas enthusiastic visionary just sounds so like, yay. Yeah. But I went with eight. Well, too bad these weren't lottery numbers because you would have won. I did actually get number eight, <laughs> which makes me feel yeah. bad because then I think I'm like, do I not know you then? Because I don't know. Because it's, again, I, it's for me. Oh, so oh, by the way, you're right. Oh, I'm a two. Oh, we need to go get lottery tickets right now. Like, let's go play. We do. We do. <laughs> we know each other so well. <laughs> See, like I wasn't insulted even. So I looked it over before I took the test as well. And I was going over each thing and I was like, I was like, I don't need to take this. I'm already controlling. I know. Like I just really just went in. On. And then I took the test and I was like, oh, you're number eight. I was like, of course. Uh, yes. <laughs> just of yep. course I am. Um, I and I, and yeah. I didn't take anything negative out of there. I feel like, like you said, being guarded. I, I, I don't see that as a negative. I feel like you yeah. should, it's great to be open, but it's also great not to, you know, show everyone everything at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's about having a little bit of balance. Um, yeah. So yeah, I was happy with mine. Um, I did really like yours at the end here, the last line where it says their development challenges to give unconditional and to nurture themselves as well as others. And I really feel that off of you. So that was another reason why I picked number yeah. two as well. So yay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. That was cool. Yeah. For getting it right. So um, why don't we just like sort of quick, I made some notes on mine and some things where I think like, you know, like these, some of the things that stood out to me as important learnings or reminders. So I'll kind of go over mine first and then, and then I'll you know, go over you can share yours. My little moments of how I felt about certain things in mine too. So, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the helper thing is uh, I'm going to tell you exactly what just what was just said in my head by part my by my brain the helper thing is a real problem here and uh that's true being the considerate helper sounds like such a good thing um but it can uh get out of control and it can be detrimental to yourself and then other people around you and so the motivation i think it's one of the interesting things is it says you know they give you what what is the motivation for your style and so mine says motivation this style stems from the motivational need to be liked and appreciated so it's really important to note i'm not helpful because i'm a good person i mean i am a good person but i am helpful because I very much need to be needed and liked. This, this all circles back to feelings of unworthiness and you know a lot of trauma responses. It's very important that people like me. It's like super important. Like if somebody doesn't like me, really bothers me. Like, I'm like, I can help. Why, would you, why do you not like me? What did I do? Um, and so I think that that's, uh, you know, 
the, the, I need to work on the loving myself and kind of giving myself, um, the stuff that I'm giving to everybody else. Um, and then, you know, when I'm at that point, if I'm, if you're really, if you're really embodying yourself in the most positive way ever, then I'm not doing this to be liked and doing it truly out of a place of love and, and, and goodness, which I think, um, is important. There's another thing in here. Oh my God. I, I highlighted stuff about you need to be needed so many times, uh, blind spots. So this was an interesting one. It says over-focusing on others may lead you to not being consistently tuned into your own needs. And you may have a blind spot for your own desires. So you need to work on, you know, helping yourself and you'll have better, more balanced relationships if you do that. But the over-focusing on others reminded me of a TED talk I saw that I, it said the dark side of helping is control. That part of the reason that I help, if you start looking at subtypes, another reason that I want to help all the time is because I want to fix it so I can control it. Mm -hmm. And, and that is the dark side because am, are you helping people or are you trying to take over their lives and control them? So since, uh, I'm, and, since I'm a controller, then am I automatically Darth Vader here? Am I the dark side? <laughs> automatically? The dark side, the Just light side I'm of you is helper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, I think control is different in terms of, of, yeah. of your type of control. Um, and then there was one other thing that jumped out here at me. Uh, and it remind it took me to another place of Brene. Um, and they give you some development exercises, which I think was really, really great. And one of them says here, do you ask for permission when giving advice or offering assistance? And we talked about this last week when we, we talked about the, the role play with Brene and, and someone who works for her. I don't, I just jump in and start trying to help and give you advice. So this weekend, I actually said to my friend who is struggling with COVID, I actually texted her, what does support look like for you right now? <laughs> I mean, did it work? Or did she say, I actually really, I mean, she, did, she oh, did answer me. Oh, she's like, you know, just being here and sending me the funny memes. Cause she's in bed and you know, but it's the first time I like, didn't just jump in and, and say like, okay, I'm going to do all of these things, or I'm going to try and cheer her up. I actually stopped and asked. So growth. See, that's growth. Good. just that little bit there really did help someone else out. She needed yeah. that help from you and you remembering what we've learned, put it into process. I love that. That's great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Learning. What about you? What stood out for you? Oh, I reading some of these things again, I already kind of knew where I was going to land on this. Some of the highlighted points, it says this style stems from motivational needs to be stronger and avoiding um, vulnerability, which that I feel is a combination of how I've always kind of built, been built myself. Also how being raised, I think back, my dad was very, you know, my dad was a, you know, he's baby boomer and he uh, you know, was in a war and he did all these amazing things. And he always was like, be strong, get out there. You can do this. So, and it wasn't a sense. He never put that into me in a negative way, but I was always like, yeah, don't be weak. And then I think back to what we learned from Brene and I keep going back to, and that was something I highlighted in the book was, you know, being vulnerable and having that related to being weak. And in reality, it is not about being weak. It's about mm -hmm. being courageous to be able to be open. And then going into where they're talking about being so the controlling aspect of things is controlling the situation. And I think that comes from a lot of it is the fear of not wanting to not be in control of a situation and giving it yeah. to someone else. And that for me is where I feel like I need to sometimes step back and go, okay, let somebody else do it. But then if somebody else is doing it, then I cannot control the situation. And then I start going crazy. And then I drive myself crazy. And then I go into this whole spiral of, oh my God, I have to control everything. So right. that was a big thing for me about literally we, I, remember highlighting and going, this is really interesting about vulnerability. And then taking this test and going, avoid vulnerability. And I was like, whoa, exactly. Yeah. Thing. That is me. I'm really right there. Yeah. Again, I never saw it as a negative thing. Again, I always take mm -hmm. everything my dad has always ever taught me about being strong and personality and this. I never yeah. saw it as a negative, but now breaking it down, I was like, okay, I find it. It's not negative, but it's more of a sign of I'm not willingness to just probably going to back to where you said about being guarded 
opening up in that way because it's like, no, I have to be the strongest and I have right. to control that situation. So that's where that, that one really was like, wow, they got me there. Yeah. That was really yeah. true. Um, some of the things where it says like you trust your gut and you're quick to respond, um, willing to make decisions to make things move forward. Um, I don't feel like I like, that was one thing I disagreed where I don't want to just go with my gut and see. I always tend to like analyze everything but I do it in a quick manner to move things forward. Um, yeah. It's funny, but it, it always makes me think of situations when I go out to eat with people, which I don't, I feel like since COVID, I don't go out to eat at all. Yeah. Uh, I hate, like, I'm always like, I open the menu, I'm like that. And then I'm sitting there yep. and, I move, and then I'm like, here, just order that because I want to move things forward. And that's yeah. just me because I'm that way. I hate people who are just like, and they're reading the menu for 45 minutes. I'm like, come on, just move things forward. Yeah. And again, I, I reading this, I was like, I am controlling. <laughs> that is me. Well, I'm a is that, uh, you know, I don't think it's but a bad an, thing. Again, I, I don't think there's a good or bad or right or wrong to this. It was just really eye-opening to right. where, oh, maybe I should just let someone take the time or maybe kind of honestly go with my gut a little bit. Yeah. But allow other people to make the decision as well. See, I think <laughs> in a group, group situation, yeah, the group aspect you know, you're a natural born leader because of that instinct, you know, to control, to make decisions quickly. You know, you can use that to bring people to consensus quickly. You can help them move through their thinking processes a little bit more quickly, I think, you know, so if you were, you know, leading a group of people or a manager, or you're just trying to order and there's six people at a restaurant, you know, I could see you kind of, jumping in and just trying to facilitate a little bit. And I don't see that as being controlling in a bad way. Mm -hmm. Somebody's got to take control. And same thing with yours. Like I, I don't see being the helpful or helping person as a negative thing. Like, I think it's great. I think it's great that you are, even if it may come from like you, you're saying something personal or dark yeah. or trauma. Uh, you know, I think it's great that you want to go out and help people. I feel like that's a trait that I need to personally learn because I feel like I just want to get things done and over with for my own personal thing. You, you are so, you, you, you are such a helpful person. You help everybody. I really did look at two okay. for you quite a bit. Really? Okay. Because I'm, I'm yeah, surprised. You are that. very I'm helpful. Yeah. No, you are tremendously helpful. Always. I mean, ask Robin. She's <laughs> off to the side. You are helpful. I just think this is, I then, but then see, it made me deep dive. Yeah. Robin's <laughs> coming me up through the, through the, the TV here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but see, that was also eye-opening to me was where I was shocked that that's how people see me because I don't see myself in that way. Mm. Like I don't see myself as the helper. I see myself as, oh, let me just get all this done because if I don't do it, no one's going to do it. And, and not in a way with business and all the way with friends, but in the big scheme of things, that's how I kind of see yeah. myself sometimes. There was one, uh, you know, they give you this uh, on the weakness and challenges. There was one that to me just felt really really real. And I actually wrote in my notes, this is so true. Where, where is that at? So I can look it up on my thing. Where, 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 where? Uh, it's on, it's page nine. It says the downside to your ability to adapt, because one of the things that twos can do is we're very adaptable. You may end up struggling to connect to who you really are. You may be confused by the many versions of yourself that you prevent, present to the world, asking yourself, which is truly the true you. And that really hit home because I do in order to help people, I do. And I'm so adaptable to the different people that I'm with that really figuring out and I'm, I'm 54 now. So I think I've got a good, decent handle on it. But when I was younger, I did not know really who I was. I knew who I was when I was with you. I knew who I was when I was with you. I knew who I was when I was with that person. But when I was alone, I was like, who am I? So it sounds weird, but if you're a two, if you take this test and you're a two, that may resonate really strongly with you. And that was one thing with me when I was taking like my favorite part here, it says your confidence and direct approach may lead to excessive self-presentation. And I feel almost the opposite of what you just said in my own personal like personality and in my life, everybody I've ever been surrounded by, everyone's like, well, we're not as strong as you or you know, you just know what you want or, mm. and for me, it's almost been seen as like a negative because yeah. I come off aggressive then. Mm. And that's why I feel like it hasn't worked with, you know, relationships and things like that in the past, because I've always just been like, you don't like it, get out of here. And it's almost yeah. maybe too much. So sometimes I have to stop and pause and go, okay, 
I have to take in other people's emotions into consideration because <laughs> I am very aggressive and just very like, you don't know what you want. Why not? You know? And yeah. it, it's, it's, and so to me, it's almost the opposite. So it's kind of funny that we're yeah. friends, like the opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to certain yep. things like that. <laughs> just like, so opposites attract in friendship and in really. Absolutely. Friendship. Absolutely. So. And we learn, we, we learn and grow from each other. Yeah. I feel like every day, like I'm learning, I'm like, okay, I need to take a second to pause. I need to really consider that not everyone is like me, which is very hard. Mm -hmm. to, I'm like, why can't everybody just, you know, make the decision? So, yeah. uh, you know, so I think breaking that down and just really, again, starting wrapping back, wrapping all this up. Yeah. Really, learning ourselves through this, but then also understanding and learning more about, like, I learned more about you today going mm -hmm. over this. I was like, okay, yeah. you know, I, I kind of thought I knew her and now I'm learning even more. So, yeah, I would definitely recommend, you know, if you're in a relationship that, you know, you both take, we'll put links down to the paid test, but also some of the free tests. Um, they're really great, like relationship conversation, um, starters kind of, uh, and, and you can do the same thing that Elvira did where you can try to guess each other and that'll kind of show you, it could be, it could end up bad. I was like, that might go badly, but you know, I mean, you know, I could pick my husband out of there in a heartbeat, but we've been married for 22 years, been together for 25, right? And I'm pretty sure he would pick me out. He would just look and he'd be like, number two, give me a break. And he would throw the thing. But, <laughs> but um, I think it's really good. And I think it's important to learn as much about yourself in as many different ways as you can. And then as you're learning about yourself, realize that everybody else out there is also themselves with all of those layers and feelings and thoughts and, you know, emotions and behaviors and all of that. And that we're all different. Elvira and I are very different, but we're also very good friends. And so when you, when you realize that people around the world might not see things the same way that you do, might not come out life from the same way that you do, but you respect and try to understand where they're coming from and you understand to some extent when they do things that either annoy you or, or maybe they, they hurt you, they understand kind of where they were coming from on that. And, and I've, I feel in most of life, nobody intentionally hurts other people. Most of the time, it's just us being us and, and, you know, oh crap, I forgot to totally think that you have feelings too. Sorry about that. Um, and I, and totally so I think, you know, agree with that. I agree with that. I feel like we do go through the our little motions and just wonder like, why is that person being so hurtful? It's like, they may not even realize they're being hurtful because their personality or who they are is just what they are, you know? So it's kind of hard to like, again, going into the resentment thing and other things that we've spoken on and touched on before is it's kind of hard to get mad at somebody for just being them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if that's who they are. And they don't understand yeah. that that isn't the same personality that they're having a conversation with, for example. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I think it's really fun. I think it's interesting. And I think it, it helps us on our journey to get better together. Brene Brown's Atlas of the Heart the book is huge. And, but I think there's so many good things to learn. And I think it comes at a perfect time. Um, you know, things like this test and other things that we're about to start, hopefully go back out into the world. Maybe, maybe we can do it from a much more kinder, more understanding place. And, and, you know, just like be better humans to each other is what I'm really hoping for. Side note, the book is half off on Amazon. So I ordered it two days ago. So I just got it. Oh, sweet. Yeah. <laughs> so if anyone has not gotten the book, it's half off right now on Amazon. If you have Amazon. Oh, that's awesome. So highly recommend. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, I wonder if that's because of the HBO special. Like people are like, I don't have to buy the book. I can watch the show. That's a good idea. Yeah. So they put on sale. So everybody will be like, oh, well, you know what? I might as well get the book yeah. now since I oh, watched it. Yeah, I'll get the book. Yeah. Hmm. Thanks. Probably. <laughs> anyway, that's just Elvira and I turn on our business brains all the time. We're like, hey, hmm, I wonder why they did that. Oh, I get it. <laughs> so Elvira, I thank you so much for, for playing this little game of guess the Enneagram with me. Um, this was really fun. We hope you guys have some fun with these tests and also learn from them and uh, make sure you are uh, subscribed, following us. Uh, this is also a podcast now. Um, so you can follow it. We'll put links to the places where you can find it. We're in all the places that the podcasts are. So so with it in the terminology. Um, and we will be back again very soon. And uh, we hope to have, you know, different guests join us along the way and just, you know, have fun getting better together, right? Awesome. I love it. I love it. <laughs> More awesome. projects. 
Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Elvira. You have a great day. And everybody out there, you guys have a really great day. We love you. Bye.